ಮೇದಿನಿ ವಿಶ್ವ ವಿನೋದಿನಿ ನಂದಿನುತೆ ಶ್ರೀವರವಿಂದ್ಯ ಶಿರೋದಿನಿ ವಾಸಿನಿ ವಿಷ್ಣು ವಿಲಾಸಿನಿ ಜೇಷ್ಣುನುತೆ ಐ ಫೌಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕೋಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ದಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಕೇಮ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಬೀಂಗ್ ಆಸ್ ಅನ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ನೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಆಗಸ್ಟ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಟು the early 1990s uh, this experiment with the nationhood and democracy was being written off very many obituaries were written about india it was said uh, that uh, it was too diverse to be run as a single nation so it would balkanize into many parts it was said that uh, <coughs> it was too poor and uh, full of too many illiterate people to f- so this is uh, from when he was writing his book india after gandhi function as a democracy so the military would take over it was said uh, uh, that uh, it lacked the ability to feed itself so it would face mass uh, starvation and famine uh, and i didn't really uh, uh, understand until i started working on this book what a <coughs> what a miracle the survival of india is and how uh, these fears uh, uh, were justified because never before had a country so diverse okay for context guys ramchandra guha is a historian and he is saying that what a miracle it is that we have survived i wonder if he will say those things now he was saying all those things because the right wingers hindutva fascists were not in power okay and for another context he is the same person whose name is ramchandra but he says that ram is an outsider god in bengal even though he is a bengali whose name is ramchandra literally hilarious and thirdly he wrote a very interesting article in i think 2015 okay he he had said that uh, uh, that where are the uh, where are the right wing uh, intellectuals right wing mein koi intellectual new kyun nahi hai right wing is right wing mein sirf bhosri wale kyun hai kyunki sitaram goel ram swarup ka naam to kabhi nahi suna hai unko kabhi debate nahi karega unka book kabhi nahi padega conrad els david frawley sab 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 ko ignore kar diya तब 2015 में ये बोला उसके बाद ही संजीव सैनियाल आने लगा जे साई दीपक आने लगा विक्रम संपत आने लगा और इनका इन, इनका इनका बिजनेस बंद करवा दिया इनका इनका रात में अब अब सोना वोना हराम हो गया है जीना हराम कर दिया है इन लोगों ने सो सो बी केयरफुल व्हाट यू विश फॉर ओके रामचंद्र गुहा सेड इन टू वेर आर राइट विंग इंटेलेक्चुअल एंड नाउ सी वट है in terms of religion and language been constituted as a single nation never before had a population uh, the majority of which could not read or write been granted <coughs> uh, uh, the franchise to elect their own leaders now towards the end of the period i was working on the book the book took a very long time to write india is a large country uh, it's a complicated history um, uh, for several years <coughs> the book was traveling in my computer under the fine name mythical history book because i wasn't sure that ever completed Uh, so it took uh, the publisher was very indulgent as i missed deadline after deadline but uh, towards the end of the period i was writing the book uh, finishing the book i found uh, that in the press uh, very different kinds of songs were being sung about india my research told me that for most of our history as an independent nation we were being told you are going down the tube uh, but when i was finishing the book in 2005 and 2006 the western press was telling us you guys are the new stars of the future and uh, i और ये न्यू स्टार ऑफ द फ्यूचर से रामचंद्र भाई को प्रॉब्लम है बट रिमेम्बर वन थिंग दिस इज प्रोबेबली वन ऑफ द मोस्ट अनोइंग थिंग्स द वेस्ट हैज सेड अबाउट अस दे दे ये ये जो कांग्रेस का जो इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी था प्रशांत प्रशांत व्हाट व्हाट पीसी महालानोविश इज नेम प्रशांत चंद्र महालानोविश ही वाज अपेरेंटली फिलोसोफर थिंकर मैथमेटिशियन इकोनॉमिक बहुत सी वाले सब कुछ करते थे सब कुछ में ही चुतियापा करते थे so he was a he was a basically economic advisor of nehru and he was the one who came up with this idea that we'll just have five tables four tables uh, and then the entire economy will function because of my calculations on this particular table and jo jo hum yahan pe jo jo allocate kar denge budget budget waise hi sab kuch ho jayega bureaucracy sab kuch kar dega acha aur kuch innovation karna hai ha ek aur uske liye table bana do ho jayega entrepreneurship to aise paperwork mein hi ho jayega to इस सब के वजह से हमारा जो जीडीपी का जो हाल था विच बिकेम वन पॉइंट वन परसेंट इन नाइनटीन सद्दाम हुसैन इनवेडेड कुवैत तेल सब खत्म हो गया जीडीपी ग्रोथ जीरो ओके उसके पहले एक एक, एक दो बार हमारा जीडीपी ग्रोथ रेट माइनस भी हुआ है जिसका मतलब है कि जीडीपी कम हो गया था ऐसा होता भी कैसे तो बट दैट्स कॉमन फॉर अदर कंट्रीज एज वेल 
but all these things happened when when that's when narsimha rao uh, was brought back from his retirement and said that bhaiya ab aap kuch kijiye humse aur nahi ho pa raha hai so then he basically says to manmohan singh that okay bro do your magic what you wanted to do all these years so uh, and manmohan singh says that okay we'll have to just uh, uh, say whatever imf says humko imf se bhi bheek chahiye bheek bheek lene ke liye jo jo imf bolega humko karna padega इसमें से नरसिम्हा राव को क्रेडिट देने का कांग्रेस को क्रेडिट देने का मनमोहन सिंह को क्रेडिट देने का किसी को भी क्रेडिट देने का कोई जस्टिफिकेशन मुझे आज तक मुझे यहाँ पे समझ में नहीं आता था आता है कि कैसे लिबर्टेरियन लिबर्टेरियन डिस्कशन ग्रुप में बोलते फिरते हैं कि नो नो नरसिम्हा राव वॉज द ग्रेटेस्ट प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया मनमोहन सिंह वॉज द ग्रेटेस्ट प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया बिकॉज दे डिड दो रिफॉर्म इन नाइनटीन अरे भोसी के पूरा दीवार पे यू हैड योर बैक अगेंस्ट द वॉल एंड सम वॉज स्ट्रेंगलिंग यू तो उस स्ट्रेंगलिंग में थोड़ा सेल्फ डिफेंस ऐसे धक्का दे दिया उसके लिए क्रेडिट चाहिए तुमको और जो कांग्रेस वाले बोलते हैं कि उनको क्रेडिट चाहिए 1991 के लिए क्योंकि देखो हमारे प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने ऐसा किया वो तो सबसे बड़ी चूती है गला दबाने के लिए और गला से हाथ उठाने के लिए दोनों के लिए कोई कैसे क्रेडिट ले सकता है क्योंकि दे आर द सेम पीपल हुई नहीं 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 नाइनटीन से पहले तो इकोनॉमी एकदम ग्रेट था हमने तो कुछ भी गलत पॉलिसी पोजिशन नहीं लिए थे सब तो ठीक चल रहा था चंगा चल रहा था मगर 1991 में भी हमने ऐसे बढ़िया चीजें किए कि उसके बाद इकोनॉमी बहुत बढ़िया हो गया तो इकोनॉमी बढ़िया बढ़िया हो गया 1991 के बाद उसके लिए भी क्रेडिट चाहिए उसके पहले चुतिया इकोनॉमी था उसको भी अच्छा भी बोलेंगे तो सिचुएशन विद कांग्रेस निनोरी सिंह यू कैन फील दंकार ऑफ अ लेफ्ट इन हिज वॉयस लोल या दे आर ऑलवेज ऑल नोइंग प्रॉब्लम ज्ञानी यस दैट्स दैट्स कॉल्ड uh yeah hindu rate of growth that is the problem yeah so then they said that this is this is the <laughs> the stupid hindus the hindus who do yagyas and do satyapratha because of the rival caste system that is why their gdp growth rate is 1.1% that 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 is uh, okay can anyone else hear the ghost in the background are maximus kya kya phook raha hai bhai raghubangsh 67 generation ne amar ekti purvaj sadasya yes okay let's let's carry on with this Uh, my talk today is um, an attempt to resolve that contradiction, if you will, or attempt to explain that contradiction. <clears throat> Now, the reason <coughs> that India was written off at birth and for many years afterwards, this was precisely because of the uniqueness and indeed the recklessness of the Indian political experiment. The reason that uh, more recently uh, India is being talked about as a rising global power is due uh, to two things: to its political success in staying united. and in holding regular free and fair elections every election in india is the largest exercise of the democratic franchise in human history simply because there are so many of us uh and we've done it 15 times uh which is quite staggering at the national level and of course there are countless state and provincial and district elections and uh, i must say especially in the context of what happened in florida florida in 2000 i think indian elections are as fair as or as uh, uh, almost as fair as elections held anywhere in the so called developing world Yeah, this is actually a great point which now he will not say obviously. क्योंकि तब भी कांग्रेस पावर में था कहीं कहीं पे बीजेपी जीत रहा था आज बीजेपी पावर में है कहीं कहीं पे कांग्रेस जीत रहा है तृणमूल जीत रहा है मगर अब इनको लग रहा है कि अब अब तो पूरा फैसी फैसिज्म आ गया है दैट इज द प्रॉब्लम एंड दैट्स अनदर ग्रेट थिंग दैट नरेंद्र मोदी एक्चुअली पॉइंटेड आउट इन इज इन हिज यूएस एड्रेस ही सेड दैट वी हैव सो मेनी वी ही वी हैव 5000 पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज and uh, 20 of them are running different parts of the country that was a great thing to point out that see you all are being told that bjp is a fascist party i am a fascist who is running the entire country right there are 20 other political parties who are running different regions of the country so one of the reasons um uh that there was a surprising respect for uh india in, uh, in kind of the global discourse was its politi- counter intuitive political success in staying united and staying democratic the other and possibly more important reason <coughs> was the spectacular uh growth rates of the economy experienced especially in from the 1990s onwards uh growth rates starting 7 and 8% which are much higher than that those experienced in in Europe and North America uh, the global recession india seems to have come out of it as well so really we are talking about two statistics a nation of a billion people uh, half of which is Ill- uh, well actually uh, global recession in 2008 did not hit india that hard if you see the gdp growth rate chart india was almost unaffected by the 2008 crash okay the entire uh, world's all major economies their uh, graph went like this all of a sudden in 2008 like how it happened during corona as well but since we were we are now more integrated with the entire world's economy but in 2008 that was not the case there was hardly any any economic uh, downside to to the 2008 crash in india who are illiterate Holding free, fair, and regular elections. 
unique in the history of Asia and Africa, at least. Um, a largely poor agrarian country with a history of being colonized, uh, suddenly uh, emerging out of a low-level uh, growth path to achieve growth rates of 8% and more. Now, Aldous Huxley, uh, the British writer, who visited India uh, while we were still a colony in the late 1920s, and wrote a charming... For those who have read How I Became a Hindu, you all know Aldous Huxley. Sitaram Goel has spoken about him many times in his book. He, he was a big... Uh, fan. I mean, not fan in, in the sense that he was, uh, Aldous Huxley, Huxley was his hero, Sitaram Goel's hero, but he read Aldous Huxley very extensively. A book about it called Jesting Pilot. Uh, uh, one of the places he visited was the Taj Mahal. And he said, uh, about the Taj Mahal, he said, marble I see conceals a multitude of sins. And uh, those two figures, 15 gender elections for a billion people, a decade and a half of 8% growth rates, conceal a multitude of deficiencies and that's uh, ha ab ab shuru hua theek hai to inka manna hai inka wo kehna hai ke are 8% gdp growth rate hua to ka hua deficiencies to reh gaye are deficiencies kahe hua ye economic growth rate ke pehle to deficiency nahi tha kyunki deficiency spelling hi kisi ko karna nahi aata tha kyunki you can you can't have equal prosperity for everyone everyone in the country cannot go around riding teslas but everyone can be equally poor to wohi rakh lete that was better deficiency kahe kiya uh, what i'm going to talk to you about today the deep fault lines within indian society that are sometimes invisible even to indians <coughs> and the fault line i'm going to start with because it in a sense uh, underlines the imperfections of our democracy and the fragility of our economic growth path the first fault line uh, I'm going to talk about is a rising insurgency in Central India, among, uh, led by Maoist revolutionaries. An insurgency that has been basically quashed on uh, to this date, and, and it was supported by these same Marxist intellectuals. They will say that no, no, I'm not a Maoist, but they have a justification. Okay, so when when Muslims do something bad, they say that yes, religion is bad. That's why these things are happening. Or these people are poor. That's why these things are happening. When Maoists do something, they say that, yes, tribals, bro, they are so sad. In bro. When Hindus do the same things out of some unjustified or justified desperation, that's when the clock turns. That's, that's when all their uh, conclusions shift and change immediately like this. Then they will say, Ab, Ab, I agya Hindu fascism, which I was talking about for the last hundred years. Ki ab aega, ab aega, ab aega. Now Hindu fascism has arrived because some riot happened somewhere. The Republic of China has abandoned Mao. But they are a group of very committed, uh, uh, idealistic, almost fanatical young men and women who, in the forests and hills of central and eastern India, are attempting to create a one party communist dictatorship. Jinke pas khane ko paisa nahi hai, magar AK 47 ka paisa hai. Yes, Nina is saying he says revolutionaries, not terrorists. Yes, good point. Uh, Abhay is saying they are doing this because they are being oppressed. Yes, yes. And they've achieved a modest degree of success. Uh, earlier this week, 72 policemen were killed in a daring attack by the Maoist insurgents. It was the largest loss of non combatant uh, you know, troops uh, in the history of independent India. Um, across a wide swathe of forests and hills, uh, uh, you know, which spread across the states uh, of Gujarat, of uh, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Orissa, Jharkhand, and Chhattisgarh. Right in the heart of India, you have a growing Maoist insurgency, and this Maoist insurgency has its roots <coughs> in the dispossession of India's tribal people. Now, uh, for the first four decades of Indian independence, our economic model was one of the state or the public se sector occupying the commanding heights of the economy. In the early 1990s, we liberalized. We uh, embraced a more outward uh, economic policy, which gave much freer play to entrepreneurial uh, energies within India and also integrated India much more actively into the global economy. Uh, uh, in the past, we had followed <coughs> the classical uh, path of uh, emerging developing economies of what was called import substituting industrialization. Now, this was overturned and we became increasingly globalized. Now, in my view, uh, globalization has had both benign and brutal effects in India. The benign effects uh, of globalization are manif manifest most directly and immediately in my hometown, Bangalore, where uh, the fact uh, that uh, we have opened out to the world economy and the happy accident 
that we are 10 hours behind North America has allowed us to leverage a skilled workforce. Bangalore has a long tradition of high quality science and engineering colleges. And the graduates of these colleges have powered the information technology industry, uh, uh, you know, uh, which is increasingly the back office of many major companies in the world, uh, which uh, maintain the accounts, uh, the office systems. Uh, we also have a rising uh, a market for health services so that medical transcriptions are read in Bangalore or in South India, <coughs> eight or 10 hours uh, ahead of America. And by the time North America, Europe picks up, the reports are there. So what you have in, in, in Bangalore is a showpiece of the benign effects of globalization, where globalization has <coughs> uh, taken advantage of a skilled, educated workforce. It has generated income, created a middle class, and also spawned as a happy byproduct, a wave of new philanthropy. So in my hometown, Bangalore, are some outstanding philanthropists, you know, sort of uh, uh, quasi or mini Bill Gates-like figures uh, who have uh, people from a modest middle class background who are successful entrepreneurs. Yes, Abhay. Tri tribals were oppressed, which led to Maoism. Kashmiri Pandits were oppressed, which led to their... <laughs> it's, it's such dark comedy, man. It, we have to laugh at these things, but they are so, so dark occurrences. And remember that thing that even the Mominpur violence in Kolkata in last year's Saraswati Puja, Republic Bangla held a, 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 a debate a panel discussion and they called different intellectuals from from different backgrounds and they did, did, did not call any uh, any politician uh, politicians purposely which i think uh, trinamool must have told them that ye sab kiya to ab ab to band kar denge channel yahan pe but they they did a very sanitized whitewashed discussion about how the riots happened and there was a i think five day curfew in that area but all those intellectuals sat down and concluded and the republic bangla's anchor nodded in agreement which is that I remember the exact quote that intellectual Bengal intellectual says that if you go and check their houses, th those people who broke the houses and, and pandals of the Hindu Dalits who live there or the lower caste Hindus who live there, the Muslims did that because if you check their houses, you will see that no helicopters land on their ter terraces, no swimming pools <laughs> are there in their terraces, which is why they felt a desperate need and because of their lack of education, they went and destroyed the houses of poor Dalit Hindus jinke ghar mein bhi helicopter nahi land karta hai aur swimming pool nahi rehta hai. So run big IT companies and have then uh, invested their wealth in uh, or uh, donated their wealth in the promotion of primary education, healthcare for the poor uh, and so on and so forth. So that's the benign side of globalization. But there's also a brutal side. And the brutal side of globalization is played out, uh, is being played out in central India, uh, in the homelands of the tribal people. About 8% of India is tribal. <coughs> uh, so they're kind of outside the Hindu caste order, if you will. Uh, and uh, they have lived among India's finest forests, alongside India's fastest flowing rivers. And now on, uh, it's found that they live on top of India's most precious resources of bauxite and iron ore. And uh, the fact that India is open now to the global economy, which includes not just the West, but China, has generated a new market for these mineral resources. And the rush to make profits uh, by Indian and foreign companies has led to the dispossession of these tribal people. And so you see, these are hints. These are the premises he's setting. These are probably one of the reasons why we must not become a superpower, right? And that's at the root of the Maoist insurgency, which is a serious challenge to Indian democracy. It's a challenge to the Indian model of economic growth. Uh, uh, it shows it up for, uh, as uh, partial and one-sided. And it also uh, is a challenge to Indian democracy because Indian democracy has <coughs> done a moderately good job, not a perfect job, but a moderately good job of giving representation to religious minorities. Despite the provocation of being surrounded by Islamic states, we are not a... Holy shit, what did he just say? Moderately good job. Listen to this moderately good job, not a perfect job, but a moderately good job of giving representation to religious minorities. Despite the provocation of being surrounded by Islamic states, we are not a Hindu nation. We are a multi-religious secular nation. Uh, uh, despite a history of the most uh, uh, gross oppression of women, uh, amid, you know, legitimized by a patriarchal religious order, women have equal rights under the Indian constitution. Despite the uh, inequitous and hierarchical caste system, they are vigorous programs of affirmative action for low caste. Oh, sub, sub, bol diya ek line mein. Wow. Let's, let's go through these one by one. So, you know, legitimized by patriarchal religious order, women have equal. Uh, 
uh, uh, despite the history of the most uh, uh, gross oppression of women most gross oppression of women india mein hi hua hai aur kahin pe most gross oppression of women nahi hua hai bhai log okay saudi arabia saudi arabia iran mein aaj bhi gross oppression nahi ho raha hai aur ho raha hai because religion is bad bro aur baki jagah mein pehle दो हजार साल पहले डेढ़ हजार साल पहले बाकी जगहों में सब लोग एकदम बिकनी पर के पहन के घूम रहे थे मगर इंडिया में बहुत ऑपरेशन था इंडिया में कोई कौन सी का नहीं पहन रहे थे अनुष्का त्यागी इज इज वाचिंग द लाइव स्ट्रीम नाइस शी डिसग्रीज विथ मी ऑन लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स ऑन ऑन अमेरिकन पॉलिटिक्स मी थिंक हार्डर Yes, Nina. This is where Vidya found his inspiration. <laughs> Mera mata chakra gaya. Women have equal rights under the Indian Constitution, despite the uh, inequities and hierarchical caste system. They ha hierarchical caste system. Sirf India mein hi tha. Or kahi pe caste system nahi tha. Aaj bhi nahi hai. Ashraf pasmanda nahi hai. Uh, bahar samurai samurai caste nahi hai. Or Smith blacksmith koi caste jati varna kahi pe kuch nahi hai. Sirf hamara hi hai. They are vigorous programs of affirmative action for low caste, but the tribals have been excluded from the formal democratic process. They are, in some ways, the people who have gained least and lost. Affirmative action, which is why today the caste system is not solved. Most from six decades of democracy and development in India, and they, uh, 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 the fact that the formal constitutional democratic political system has not given the tribal people an adequate voice, the added fact that economic globalization has led to economic deprivation for the tribal people. Has delivered them into the waiting hands of the Maoist revolutionaries. See, he's he's almost right, but a little wrong in this case, right? He's saying that economic globalization, economic deprivation for the tribal people, has has led to economic deprivation. But the problem is that you have to you have to address the elephant in the room. Unka jo uh, model of development hai, which is which is tied closely to their religion, you have to approach this with the critical theory of religion, not critical theory theory of race, or not simply economic uh, economic prosperity is bad, which is what he is doing. But you have to understand that why that happened, and then pursue your economic prosperity by bypassing that as much as possible. We can't bypass that fully. We can't stop uh, using coal. We can't stop using our minerals for now. But which is why we are targeting a zero emission uh, system by twenty seventy at least. बट ये सब इनको करने से कौन किसने रोका था जो कर रहा है उसको भी तो आज गाली दे रहे हो एज दे विल डिलीवर देम इनटू द वेटिंग हैंड्स ऑफ द माओइस रेवोल्यूशनरीज अह हुज पॉलिटिकल प्रोग्राम अह आई पर्सनली हैव नो सिंपैथी अह दो आई कैन सी व्हाई दे आर सक्सेसफुल बिकॉज़ अपार्ट फ्रॉम अह द डिप्रिवेशन ऑफ द ट्राइबल पीपल अह द ट्राइबल्स लिव इन द हिल्स एंड फॉरेस्ट व्हिच आर क्लासिकली परफेक्टली वेल सूटेड फॉर द काइंड ऑफ गरिला वॉरफेयर दैट द माओइस प्रैक्टिस सो दैट्स अ मेजर चैलेंज a challenge that is uh, much under appreciated within india too uh, you know i live in bangalore which is the economic showpiece so see pura ka pura maoism defend kar diya justification de diya of modern india uh, my friend david malone was <coughs> uh, posted as canada's distinguished high commissioner in delhi uh, which is the political showpiece of modern india it's a city i visit uh, often my, myself and if you fly from delhi to bangalore and back from uh, uh, the capital of india's thriving and robust democracy to the capital of india's uh, or, or to the showpiece of india's economic surge below you on the ground 35000 feet below you on the ground invisible to you is this civil war being played out between maoist insurgents and uh, uh, the indian police with the tribals caught in the crossfire now <clears throat> that's one major challenge facing contemporary india the political and economic system of contemporary india it's a challenge from the left but there's a simultaneous challenge from the right and the challenge from the right is that of religious fundamentalism <clears throat> now um, india was constituted in 1947 as i said as a secular nation but india was divided at birth into two nations pakistan which was a muslim homeland and later on has become an islamic republic and so long as pakistan exists there will be provocations uh, for hindu fundamentalists in india to constitute Uh, similarly constitute a state based on religious principles a kind of hindu pakistan if you will in which in pakistan non muslims have secondary rights so he is justifying his calling for the destruction of pakistan can you see he is saying that as long as there is a pakistan there will be, will be provocations from hindu fundamentalists so if you want to stop hindu fundamentalists from getting a voice or getting provoked eliminate pakistan ho gaya inka hi equation hai ye they don't have equal rights to muslims so there is a uh, impetus uh, that the uh, existence of pakistan provides for right wing radical hindu groups 
so 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 eliminate pakistan ho gaya to constitute india as a state in which hindus which are who are the dominant religion will have dominant religious community will have uh, superior rights to muslims and christians and parsis and sikhs and jains and so on. now this provocation has been was resisted at birth by our first and visionary prime minister jawaharlal nehru who working in the tradition of mahatma gandhi uh-huh. did not discriminate on the basis of faith uh-huh. but aha uh-huh. क्या बात है क्या बात है इसीलिए इसीलिए सोमनाथ मंदिर को बनाने दे नहीं दे रहा था आरकियो टूरिज्म मरवा रहा था ही इज कॉलिंग फॉर डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ पाकिस्तान बिकॉज ही वांट्स माउस लाइक दे आर लाइक हियर यस सर ओवर द डेकेड्स द सेकुलर इन पाकिस्तान में ट्राइबल्स नहीं है बांग्लादेश में ट्राइबल्स नहीं है सब सब ट्राइबल सिर्फ मध्य प्रदेश और झारखंड छत्तीसगढ़ में है इंक्लूसिव प्लूरल प्रिंस प्लूरल रिलीजियस पॉलिटिक्स ऑफ गांधी एंड नेहरू आहा हैव बीन चैलेंज्ड बाय एग्रेसिव राइट विंग हिंदू फंडामेंटल समटाइम्स विद सक्सेस समटाइम्स विद लेस सक्सेस Yes, th- that is why Hindu Mahasabha gave equal rights to everyone, all citizens, regardless of gender, religion, caste, creed, etc. And even called for uh, good self-defense rights. The Hindu Mahasabha con- Constitution, draft Constitution, which was rejected between 1998 and 2004, <coughs> the central government in India was led by a right-wing Hindu party, and uh, the assertion of Hindu radicalism <laughs> provides a kind of uh, uh, provocation for competitive religious radicalism. So, within all our faith communities. within the christians the sikhs the muslims even the jains there is a strong hardcore fundamentalist element fair enough itna to admit kiya hai ki har logo mein radicals hote hain chalo theek hai within each of india's major religious communities there is a battle going on between liberal plural forces on the one side and intolerant fundamentalist forces on the other और यहाँ पे हमारा इंटॉलरेंट फंडामेंटलिस्ट प्रधानमंत्री सबको रिसोर्सेज फ्री बीज देते फिर रहा है योगी आदित्यनाथ भी बोल रहा है कि हाँ प्रॉपर इक्वलिटी होगा पॉजिटिव डिस्क्रिमिनेशन नहीं होगा नेगेटिव डिस्क्रिमिनेशन भी नहीं होगा एक आम सनातन भारत दल विच इज अ कल्चरली मोर राइट विंग देन बीजेपी इज ऑल्सो कॉलिंग फॉर इक्वल राइट फॉर ऑल ऐसा है हमारे फंडामेंटलिस्ट एंड चैलेंज ने सब प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व कर लिए हाँ टू थाउजेंड टेन में अच्छा अच्छा बातें बोल रहे थे वेस्टर्न यूरोप नॉर्थ अमेरिका नॉर्थ अमेरिका या वेस्टर्न यूरोप और नॉर्थ अमेरिका तो आज इनको पता नहीं है कि कैसे कैसे हैंडल करे सलमान रुर्जी को मारने वाले लोगों को पत्थरबाजों को बट द फन पार्ट इज दैट इन डेजिग्नेटेड सर्वाइवर देर इज अ डायलॉग वेर इन द थर्ड सीजन आई थिंक वेर दे आर डिस्कसिंग इमिग्रेशन एंड दे आर से Oh, oh no no it's in the, in the in the first season only they are saying that see western europe to call these immigrants and refugees from all middle eastern countries they are not having any problems they are they are all they are all muslims they are not facing any problems so there is a fictitious florida governor who is being asked to take some refugees and that governor is refusing he is a republican so the democrat uh, uh, wife of the president is saying that why aren't you taking them because western europe took them and they are not having any problems now see where they are in 2023 Uh, where religious practice uh, is a private matter uh-huh. between uh, an individual and his or her maker or la- work of board is a private matter act there of in india religious practice religious beliefs spill over into the political domain uh, sometimes in deeply unpleasant and damaging and costly and bloody ways now as it happens when india was born in 1947 it faced these two challenges a challenge from the religious right most dramatically expressed in the assassination of mahatma gandhi uh 5 months after indian independence by a hindu fanatic but there was also a challenge from the left aisa hindu fanatic jisne muslim ke badle mein ek ek hindu ram rajya chahne wale log ko hi jaake uda diya theek hai aur uh, and hindu mahasabha gave equal rights to all in their draft constitution 6 weeks after gandhi was murdered the communist party of india acting uh under orders from their soviet masters uh, launched a country wide insurrection against the indian infant indian state and that insurrection took two and a half years to contain the threat from the religious right and the simultaneous cont- threat from the political left uh, which um, india experienced at its birth was tamed and contained and managed because the center was resolute because the first generation of indian nationalists people like jawaharlal nehru uh vallabhai patel who was india's home minister a very capable and uh, outstanding uh, orga- organizer very capable and outstanding organizer okay jisko congress code ka committee ke sabha mein sabse zyada votes mile the sab votes mile the when they were deciding who should be the candidate 
for the Prime Minister of India. All of them voted for Vallabhai Patel. Not one single vote went to Jawaharlal Nehru. Even then, Jawaharlal Nehru became the Prime Minister, the first visionary Prime Minister, because Mahatma Gandhi said that, no, no, I'll make Prime Minister, no, I'll leave the food and food. And then that visionary Prime Minister de-industrialized West Bengal. Our first law minister, who came from an untouchable background, B. R. Ambedkar, who drafted the Democratic and Republican Indian Constitution, this first generation of Indian politicians made sure that the centre held firm, uh, that the challenges of religious radicalism on the right and of political extremism, Marxist insurgency on the left. I I I do agree. Give credit to Congress for for carrying over the Indian state and and at least. Not creating further destruction. आधा देश तो दो तरफ से दे दिया. उसके बाद और भी balkanization नहीं हुआ. इसके लिए थोड़ा credit हम दे सकते हैं. But the challenges were are not what he is saying. Hindu fundamentalists were not calling for the destruction of the Indian state or the destruction of the country or breaking up of the country. Hindus did not want partition. Hindus never called for partition. Partition even after that. So how is Hindu fundamentalism a goddamn threat to Jawaharlal Nehru? The left uh, were combated, uh, were conquered. Uh, were domesticated, and a uh, democratic constitution was forged in 1950, and our first elections were held in 1952. Now, 60 years later, the democratic centre faces again a challenge from the left and a from the extreme left and from the extreme right, from so to say the non-constitutional or extra-constitutional left and the extra-constitutional right. Extra <laughs> BJP is extra-constitutional right, guys. Okay, Nina is saying, yeah, his communist gods like Marx and Mao also are mixed with politics threatening secularism. No, yes, and we have people uh, who who name their kids Stalin, Lenin, Timur, but no one names their kids uh, uh, Adolf in the country. Okay, no one even knows that Stalin, Mao, uh, these people were as bad, as dangerous, as murderers, if not more, as Adolf Hitler. But unlike in 1948 and 49. We do not have a resolute and capable centre. Um, today in India, most political parties are family firms. This is true, most obviously, of the Congress Party. The Congress Party uh, uh, is one of the great political parties of the modern world. Now, most Indians who are alive now uh, only know it as a family firm, uh, because most Indians uh, are below the age of forty, and the Congress has been a family firm since 1975 or thereabouts. But for 90 years before that. It was an extraordinary institution. Uh, the Congress, from the late 19th century through uh, uh, the first uh, decades of the 20th century, united <laughs> a diverse and disparate population around uh, uh, a democratic, inclusive, secular agenda. It was the Congress that provided uh, the first generation of nation builders in independent India. For most of its history, the Congress was run the way a modern political party should be run, uh -huh. as an open, secular institution, wow. uh, which any talented individual could join. Uh, which held regular elections at different levels of the organization. So the Congress had national elections, it had provincial elections, it had district elections. But Indira Gandhi, who became uh, Prime Minister more or less by accident in, in the late 1960s, converted the Congress into a family farm. And okay, some important comments here. Abhay Agarwal is saying India was bo born in 1947. Modi ne US Congress me thousand year ka foreign rule bolke do diya. That was. Yes, extremely important. Yes, I was just saying our leftists are so low IQ. How the hell they were celebrated for seventy-five years as intellectuals? Because they write in English, they write their papers in English, they write editorials in English, they speak in these international conferences in English. यहाँ पे अगर जाके कोई हिंदी या संस्कृत में बात करेगा तो उसको लात मार के निकाल देगा. Sitaram Goel was proficient, insanely brilliant in English, but he was just ostracized. किसी ने कहीं पे उनको डिबेट नहीं किया उसको जरा भी डेलीबरेटली उनको भाव नहीं दिया इनको इनको हम फुटेज देंगे ही नहीं सीताराम गोयल का नाम भी उच्चारण मत करो कहीं पे इग्नोर कर दो और नाम में सीता है राम है क्या होगा कहीं पे हिंदुत्ववादी होगा उ, उसका बुक कभी मत पढ़ो कभी काउंटर नहीं करो पढ़ो भी तो छुप छुप के पढ़ो भूल जाओ उसके बाद कांग्रेस फ्रॉम ओपन सेक्युलर इंस्टीट्यूशन टू फैमिली फर्म दैट बेर एम्फोसाइज The first uh, uh, consequence is that because India's greatest political party was converted into a family firm, other political parties were given uh, the incentive to do the same thing. So that, for example, uh, in the state of uh, Tamil Nadu in South India, uh, the major political party, the DMK, was a social democratic party with a great emphasis on gender equality and social welfare measures for the poor. The now uh, uh, widely hailed program of midday meals, uh, for example, in Indian schools. Whereby the state provides a hot meal uh, for every student, especially girl students, which is extremely unhealthy. 
uh, where often lizards and and insects are found okay uh, democratic inclusive agenda's best examples are 1975 and 1984 yaar maximus tumhe noise bhi aati hai aur headphones bhi hatwane hai uh, 80s mein bhi to bjp was oppressing dalits no yes yes uh, thus providing an incentive uh, to promote female education was promoted by the dnk but the uh-huh. dnk now exists so that the man in power karunadevi is his name will pass on his mantle as chief minister of tamil nadu to ओके यूट्यूब का ए आई सब टाइटल जनरेटर ने करुणानिधि का क्या सब टाइटल दिया देखो स्टैलिन नाम रख लिया अजीब बात है एडोल्फ नाम रखता तो क्या होता पंजाब which has uh, uh, which is dominated by a party called the akali dal which like the dmk was a progressive reformist party of the sikhs uh, which in the, which arose in the 1920s uh, as a challenge to a corrupt and decadent clergy which then controlled the sikh gurdwaras and the sikh faith so it is a party with a honorable tradition of democratic affirmation the akali dal today is controlled by a single family called the badals now that's the first consequence of the conversion of the congress into a family firm you know if uh, uh the star the, the 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 most brightly lit star in the uh, uh, sky you know uh, succumbs to this kind of nepotistic politics so will the lesser parties the second consequence is that public appointments are <coughs> increasingly decided on the basis of kinship nepotism and sycophancy and this brings me uh, from the decline of the indian political party to the decline of indian public institutions in my lifetime uh I was born in the late 1950s. So in my lifetime I've seen a visible decline in the capability, efficiency, integrity, honesty of <coughs> public hospitals, public schools, uh, uh public courts, public universities and so on and so forth largely because uh modern institutions such as hospitals and courts and universities which need to be run on impersonal principles have become increasingly captive in the Indian system to kinship, family, caste and religion. Now, this uh, decline of public institutions, uh, this corruption and corrosion of uh, the democratic political process, in my view, is partly or even largely responsible uh, for one uh, rather striking feature of modern India, which is the growing gap between the rich and the poor. Uh, I myself uh, would probably call, uh, you know. politically i'm somewhere in the center slightly to the left of center not very much to the left of center maybe one or half degree to the left of center uh, if if that uh, so i see a uh, a very important role for the market i think it's very important uh, it, it's good that in the 1990s we opened out the economy that we unleashed the entrepreneurial energies uh, of the indian innovator and businessman but i also believe that while it's a utopian fantasy to think that any society uh, can achieve equality of result all modern democratic states must strive to the extent possible to achieve equality of opportunity uh, that they must have decent uh, health care and education systems so that even the poor have an equal chance now in the kind of con- in the kind of situation i've described where you have um, uh, the decline of public institutions you you have a surge of economic growth over the last 10 or 15 years which has created a ex- large middle class but hasn't really addressed the problems of endemic and mass poverty now and these contrasts are visible in any क्या बोल रहा है ये एंडेमिक मास पॉवर्टी हो रहा है मगर मिडिल क्लास का साइज बढ़ गया हाँ मास पॉवर्टी जिसमें है पॉवर्टी पोअर किसको बोलते हैं लोअर क्लास को और एट बेस्ट लोअर मिडिल क्लास द नंबर ऑफ पीपल दोज पीपल परसेंटेज ऑब्वियसली ऑफ दोज पीपल श्रिंक राइट बिकॉज द मिडिल क्लास इज इंक्रीजिंग हाउ इज द मिडिल क्लास इंक्रीज इज 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 हाउ इज द मिडिल क्लास इंक्रीजिंग द रिचेस्ट आर नॉट बिकमिंग पुअर राइट तो मिडिल क्लास में घुस कौन रहा है जो कि पहले पुअर थे जिनके माँ बाप पुअर थे तो मास पॉवर्टी को एड्रेस नहीं किया गया इनकम इन इक्वालिटी बढ़ गया मगर मैजिकली मिडिल क्लास का साइज भी बढ़ गया हर्षय सिंह ए आई एम सेट दैट दिस रिच गेटिंग रिचर एंड पुअर गेटिंग पुअर इज अफ्ट स्टॉक्स यस वन हंड्रेड परसेंट एंड हर्ष प्लीज वॉच माई वीडियो विच आईस दीज टॉपिक Uh, in the oxfam video live uh, live stream and even some videos with uh, with abhijit banerjee in the thumbnail thomas soil in the thumbnail i have addressed this countless times 
so i'm very <laughs> annoyed with this uh, statement again uh, uh, from him that my income inequality is increasing income inequality is not increasing income inequality will al- always always increase and that's not a problem okay that's what i'm saying that you can only have equal poverty equal prosperity kabhi bhi nahi hota hai so imagine this is a, a equally pov- equally poor society like sudan or something and then some development happens some prosperity increases and then more more people gain econ- uh, gain prosperity f- faster than than some other people एंड उनके बीच में ये गैप बढ़ता जाता है बढ़ता जाता है बट दैट डज नॉट मैटर वन फकिंग बिट वट शुड मैटर टू यू इज हाउ आर द पुअरेस्ट लिविंग ओके वेन वेन द कंट्री वॉज इक्वली पुअर तब पुअर्स का जो संख्या था परसेंटेज था या फिर उनका जो लिविंग कंडीशन था उससे आज बेहतर हुआ है कि नहीं दैट इज ऑल आई एम सेइंग ये 1991 के बाद इनकम इनक्वालिटी जो बढ़ गया इसके वजह से मैं जो चंद्रगुप्त मौर्य के मौर्य से ज्यादा कंफर्ट में हूं वो कौन देखेगा वो इग्नोर कैसे कर दे अभय अगरवाल मिडिल क्लास इज इक्वल टू मास पॉवर्टी द रामचंद्र थ्योरी ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स ओके सर इज इज नॉट प्रोग्रेसिव दे वर ब्रिटिश क्रिएशन फॉल्स हिस्ट्री क्रिएटेड हियर यू शुड लिसन टू पुनित सहानी विद संजय दीक्षित एब्सोल्युटली ब्लोन अवे एज हाउ ब्रिटिश क्रिएटेड रिलीजन ऑफ सिखिजम यस इंडियन सिटी इवन मोर विजिबल इफ यू ट्रेवल आउट ऑफ द सिटी इन टू दंट्री साइड सो आई थिंक ग्रोइंग गैप बिटवीन रिच एंड इज अ मेजर प्रॉब्लम एंड चैलेंज फेसिंग इंडिया टुडे अच्छा तो ये अगर प्रेमिस है तब तो हमको पता है कि ये कहां जाने वाला है बट ही हैज टेन रीजन वाई आई थिंक दिस इज द सेकंड रीजन व्हाई इंडिया शुड नॉट बिकम अ सुपर पावर इसने इसने एक्चुअली ऑनेस्टली बोल दिया है कि अच्छा पाकिस्तान जब तक रहेगा हिंदू फंडामेंटल्स रहेगा तो उड़ा दो पाकिस्तान को अच्छा जब जब इकोनॉमिक प्रॉस्पेरिटी आएगा इंडिया सुपर पावर बनेगा इनकम इनक्वालिटी बढ़ जाएगा तो इनकम इनक्वालिटी मत लाने दो इंडिया सुपर पावर बनना नहीं चाहिए इसलिए बड़ा बड़ा क्लियर फैसिनेटिंग थिंकिंग है इनका this is another problem uh, which uh, requires i think uh, which the market can't solve and that's a problem of environmental degradation and i'm not talking climate change here you know i think uh, there's a this is also right and wrong environmental degradation solve ho raha hai jahan pe market economics sabse zyada kaam kar raha hai sabse zyada environment ka bachane ka khayal kiske dimag mein aata hai wo wo kiske dimag mein aayega जिनको जिनको मतलब वुड जला के खाना बनाना पड़ेगा वो सोचेगा अरे भाई एनवायरनमेंट का कितना बुरा हो गया तो तो इकोनॉमिक प्रॉस्पेरिटी इज द वे टू सेविंग द एनवायरनमेंट वेरी विगरस डिबेट अबाउट इंडिया रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज ऑन द ग्लोबल स्टेज एज रिगार्ड्स क्लाइमेट चेंज एंड यू नो यू आर ऑल फेमिलियर विद डिबेट यू नो द पोजिशन ऑफ इट्स अ डिबेट पोलराइज बिटवीन द अर्ली पोल्यूटर्स एंड द लेट पोल्यूटर्स इफ यू वे and i don't want to get into that uh, because i think that's not really uh, what i uh, want want to draw your attention to i want to draw your attention to the fact that regardless of india's position in global negotiation you know uh, regardless of whether uh, it's uh, north america and europe that bear the historic responsibility for the accumulation of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and so on indians have to be much more proactive on the environmental front because of the abuse of the environment within india itself which is exactly what narendra modi is doing and this guy hates him indian cities uh have the highest rates of air pollution in the world which may be another reason i suffer from laryngitis apart from too much bullshitting uh but uh that's only one side or one one aspect of the way in which the surge in economic growth has damaged the indian environment uh our rivers are dead uh, uh historically Uh, as in most great agrarian civilizations the cities came up on waterways delhi on the jamuna banaras on the <coughs> on the ganga um, uh, guwahati on the brahmaputra and so on but these rivers are dead because of industrial pollution and uh, domestic sewage um, there's been a massive depletion of groundwater aquifers uh, because of commercial farming kyunki tumhare visionary prime diverse, minister not just a spectacular tumhare tumhare visionary prime minister tumhare visionary prime minister ke descendants in the congress they had no idea how to save the river because they had such massive corruption aur jo ye degradation of institution degradation of institutions bhose ke bolte phir rahe ho wo ho raha tha 1947 ke pehle din se hi it is the tiger but also bird life of plant diversity uh, we have a serious problem of uh, related to the disposal of chemical waste now so india uh, is in many ways uh, an environmental basket case regardless of our position on climate change uh, uh, we uh, the, the processes of economic growth in india uh, and the apathy of the state in monitoring controlling um, uh, moderating the negative aspects of this process of economic growth has led to widespread and varied forms of environmental degradation from a very high and intolerable rates of air and water pollution to uh, 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 to the depletion of groundwater aquifers uh, to the death of rivers and so to the decline of biodiversity and so on and so forth 
इसके लिए हमको अच्छे अच्छे गाड़ियाँ बनाने पड़ेंगे अच्छे गाड़ियाँ खरीदने पड़ेंगे अच्छे गाड़ी इनोवेट करने पड़ेंगे ये सब नहीं हो रहा पा, हो पा रहा था हो पा रहा था बिकॉज ऑफ योर इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसीज बिकॉज ऑफ योर लेफ्ट ऑफ सेंटर डिग्री टू द लेफ्ट वो पॉलिसीज के वजह से पूरा देश सिर्फ एक गाड़ी चलाता था एम्बेसडर उसमें पॉल्यूशन नहीं होगा तो क्या होगा you need public action uh, as with how to tackle uh, very high rates of inequality and apart from very high rates of inequality to ye to bullshit premise hai uske upar abhi kya kya layer of argument khada karega wo wo dekhte hain the state uh, a key actor here should be the media now unfortunately uh, one of the uh, while india is not china and google can operate freely in india uh, unlike in china uh, while we do have an active and free press we also have a press that is somewhat one sided a press that is uh, uh, increasingly taken up with a kind of worship of glamour and celebrity rather than look at the entire diversity of social and environmental uh, issues in india today so uh, <clears throat> for example more people will cover a beauty contest than agrarian distress uh, the environment uh, we had a very act- yes and fair enough because beauty contest mein at least competence ka kaam ho raha hai wahan pe theek hai कोई कोई मॉडल बंदी सचमुच हार्ड वर्क करके डाइट वाइट कंट्रोल करके वर्कआउट करके ठीक ठाक चलना फिरना प्रैक्टिस करके ब्यूटी कॉन्टेस्ट में जा गई है ये तुम्हारा जो फार्मर डिस्ट्रेस एग्रेरियन डिस्ट्रेस हो रहा है वो तुम्हारे पॉलिसीज की वजह से हो रहा है और वो सॉल्व भी नहीं कर रहे हो जब कोई फार्म लॉ रहा आ रहा है उनका भी तुम विरोध कर रहे हो तो तुम्हारा तुम्हारा कौन एग्रेडियन प्रॉब्लम का बात सुनेगा पेपर में एक्टिव एनवायरमेंटल जर्नलिस्टिक ट्रेडिशन अनिल अगरवाल अनिल अगरवाल Uh, who founded the Center for Science and Environment in New Delhi, and who published in the early 1980s annual reports on the Indian environment. They were called Citizens' Reports on the Indian Environment, and they documented extensively how we were using and abusing our forest, water, air, uh, mineral resources. However, uh, when we embraced an outward-looking economic policy in the 1990s, environmental reportage went by the wayside. Uh, every newspaper either laid off its environmental correspondents. Or redesignated them stock market correspondents. So the Indian stock market correspondents will be. Then the finance ka awareness will come. Finance ka awareness will come. Then we will have a little bit of our economic prosperity. Will grow. Economic prosperity will grow. Then we will have a little bit. We will give a fuck about the environment. And media, we should be vigilant about it. Because without economic prosperity, in order to give a fuck about the environment, we had to be religious. We had to be devout Hindus. जिसको तुम लोगों ने रामचंद्र गुहा स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम राजा राम मोहन रॉय तुम लोगों ने उसको गोली मार दिया है इस मैटर्स वी शुड रियली बी फोकसिंग इन अ मच मोर सिस्टमैटिक वे द अटेंशन ऑफ सिटीजन सिटीजनरी ऑफ पब्लिक पॉलिसी ऑन एनवायरमेंटल डिग्रेडेशन आई थिंक इज प्ले अ लेस देन ऑप्टिमम रोल एडिंग टू आवर चैलेंजेस इज द फ्रैगमेंटेशन ऑफ द पॉलिटिकल सिस्टम you know india is probably too diverse too large too diverse too complicated to be uh, to be run uh, on the classical european model of uh, a two party democracy i think canada is uh, finding it difficult and india is much larger and much more diverse than canada so it's no surprise perhaps that in the ruling coalition in new delhi you may have 16 or 18 parties represented now this <coughs> diversity of political parties uh, is both rational and irrational it's a uh, just and fair representation of the diversity the social and cultural and political diversity of india uh, its linguistic uh, ethnic religious diversity but this to ye collectivism ka argument hai theek hai hindu fundamentalism kharab hai okay religion kharab hai magar ghoom phir ke bar bar लिंग्विस्टिक डाइवर्सिटी के लिए एथनिसिटी के लिए एक पार्टी चाहिए ये इनका आर्ग्यूमेंट है दिस इज वॉट आई डिजग्री विद अभिजीत चावड़ा ऑल्सो ऑन ही ऑलवेज सेज दैट देर आर सो मेनी डिफरेंट रिलीजियस एथनिसिटीज एंड एंड रेशियल एथनिसिटीज वाई शुड देर बी अस फॉर देम एज वेल इन इन द अमेरिकन पोलिटिकल सिस्टम अरे भोसरी के इसीलिए उसका भी उसका ट्वेंटी थ्री डॉलर ट्रिलियन डॉलर इकोनॉमी है इसलिए हमारा नहीं हो रहा है इसीलिए क्योंकि हमारे कास्ट लाइन्स में इतने पार्टीज है लिंग्विस्टिक लाइंस में इतने पार्टीज है एथनिक लाइंस में इतने पार्टीज है आई डोंट हैव अ प्रॉब्लम विद 500 पार्टीज आई हैव अ प्रॉब्लम विद पार्टीज बीइंग फॉर्मड ऑन दोस दोस लाइंस दोस लाइंस में करे को तब तब तो एक हिंदू पार्टी भी चाहिए एक एकम सनातन भारत भी चाहिए बट व्हाट आई वुड रादर हैव इज 
50 parties competing on who can uh, do the best economic uh, prosperity while keeping uh, great balances with with the environment and while making sure that no one starves to death because of uh, some some evil version of capitalism but ये टू पार्टी सिस्टम का सोल्यूशन जो अपोजिंग साइड से रामचंद्र गौर अभिजीत चावड़ा देते हैं कि हाँ हाँ इतने सारे इतने सिटीज है तो सबको बना लो एक 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 पार्टी दैट इज एब्सोल्यूटली स्टूपिड डाइवर्सिटी ऑफ प्रॉब्लम हो गया अमेरिका में तो डाइवर्सिटी चाहिए इकोनॉमिक प्रॉस्पेरिटी एंड इकोलॉजिकल सेंसिटिविटी डजेंट हैव टू बी म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव यस सेम टाइम यू कॉन्ट है गुड लॉन्ग टर्म रोबस्ट पॉलिसीज इन एटीन पार्टी गवर्नमेंट एंड इन इंडिया पर्टिकुलरली यू कॉन्ट है ऑनेस्ट गवर्नेंस इधर uh uh when uh, a new coalition comes to power after a general election in india for the last 20 years we've had about six or seven general elections uh and the last uh, time a single party achieved a majority was in 1984 so we've had 1989 1991 96 98 99 2004 2009 7 the seven general elections each time typically and <coughs> you canadians uh, would be familiar with one side of the story not the other side of the story which i'm going to come to uh you you find that uh, you need 272 seats to uh, have a majority in parliament so one major party say the congress party has about 160 seats so it needs about 100 and how does it get its 100 it goes shopping for allies and usually uh, if you add 6 and 8 and 10 and 12 seats you end up with a 15 party coalition and you cross that magic number of 272 now that's a procedure which many uh, uh, democracies uh, uh, seats you end up with a 15 party coalition and you cross that magic number of 272 अरे गलती से मैंने क्या दबा दिया एक मिनट रुको रुको गलत शॉर्टकट की दबा दिया शिट मेजॉरिटी इन पार्लियामेंट सो वन मेजर पार्टी से द कांग्रेस पार्टी हैज अबाउट 160 सीट्स सो इट नीड्स अबाउट 100 एंड हाउ डज इट गेट इट्स 100 इट गोस शॉपिंग फॉर एलाइज एंड यूजुअली इफ यू ऐड 6 एंड 8 एंड 10 एंड 12 सीट्स यू एंड अप विद अ 15 पार्टी कोलिशन एंड यू क्रॉस दैट मैजिक नंबर ऑफ 272 नाउ दैट्स अ प्रोसीजर व्हिच मेनी अ Uh, democracies uh, uh, are familiar with uh, in europe too for example in germany you have always have a problem where uh, the social democrats or the christian democrats need to uh, cozy up to the free democrats or the greens to 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 form a ruling coalition but where india is special is that is in terms of the price of joining a coalition now in germany for example i mean since i know a little bit about germany you will probably find that the greens if they want to join a coalition will say give us the environment ministry the free democrats uh, because they uh, think that foreign policy is important or fashionable or prestigious we'll say give us the foreign ministry in india the party uh, that is being wooed by the larger party will say give us the ministry in which we can make the most money quickly so multi party coalitions in india have led not just to political uh, uh, not just led to political instability uh, to the lack of uh, systematic uh, policies being formulated to tackle energy or health or education or the environment have also led to the intensification of corruption now so we have a, a relatively uh, we have a complicated and not entirely stable polity we also have uh, parts of india that are not entirely comfortable with being uh, 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 you know indian apart from the maoist insurgency i mentioned there are at least three states of the indian union the state of kashmir which is disputed with india and pakistan and the states of manipur and nagaland in the northeast where there are major insurgencies where groups like with the maoists groups of committed young men and less often yes why because his visionary prime minister jawaharlal nehru allowed that state to be overrun by missionaries who taught them that you are not hindu you are and therefore you are definitely not indian and whereas at the same time china and uh, and other maoist governments and then communist governments kept funding their movements the longest standing longest running insurgency in the country is not the maoist insurgencies it's a group called nagalims for christ it's a christian socialist party they are they are calling for a different state for so long aur ye hindutvadi fascistwadi fascist fascist government aane ke baad aaspa hat gaya yahan se magar ye ramchandra guha ko pasand nahi hai and committed young women are fighting an armed struggle for independent homelands for independent nations <coughs> um so you have disturbances in three states uh, in in the borders you also have a very unstable neighborhood and i think uh, certainly much more unstable than uh, residents of this great country i mean you have the you know the peaceful the cold admittedly but the cold and the peaceful arctic to the, the north of you you have uh, this big behemoth to the south of you you have the sea on two sides who do we have we have on our west pakistan somewhere between an islamic theocracy and a failed state uh, uh, uh you know uh, 
move up towards the north, you have China, uh, with whom we fought a bloody war uh, in 1962, and we have border. So, how is our freedom of uh, speech or freedom of uh, press going to be exactly the same as USA or Canada or, or Europe? Okay, we have three insurgent states. We have enemies on all sides, and we are a bigger, way, way, way bigger population than any European country or even USA or Canada. But our our uh, po- policies are going to be exactly the same as those countries. How is that going to work? Issues that are unresolved come far south. We have Sri Lanka, which has had a brutal civil war, which has claimed a hundred thousand people, and despite the apparent military success of the current regime, it's a civil war that hasn't really addressed the underlying problems that caused the conflict in the first place. Move east, you have Bangladesh, uh, which has a very fragile democracy. Move northeast, uh, uh, north, uh, you have Nepal, uh, where you had a Maoist insurgency, which is, ha- hasn't really found a soft landing. Uh, uh, you know, where the democratic process is still quite fragile and unresolved. Now, what I've done so far uh, is to uh, itemize, uh, and I'll recapitulate these points. Itemize uh, what, uh, not the multitude of sins. But the multitude of problems that those aggregate statistics about India's apparent economic and political success conceal. Apparent. The, the, this is why um, commies and, and Marxists are so annoying. India's economic success in 2010, which is that usual growth rate of eight percent, about he's calling that apparent, as if it's like he's 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 giving the vibe that it's not real economic prosperity it's just what you guys in canada have heard it's it's not really that bro we have so many problems problem hai isliye 8% economic growth ko ignore kar do monika ganguly saying dada purbobongo ke punoray bharate anar byapare apnar ki mot ekdom no no fucking way uh, this bengali woman is asking that uh, what do you think of bangladesh getting uh, reinstated in india and i'm saying that absolutely no because uh, the, that country is filled with assholes and let me repeat these 10 points the 10 reasons India will not be a superpower. Now, acha, 40 minutes ka premise set hua. Ab dekhte hain kya bolte hain. Kyu humko garib rehna chahiye aur garib. Ah, uh, first, the challenge of left-wing political extremism, the Maoist insurgency in the heart of India. Second, the uh, the still uh, very visible tendency towards fundament, fundamentalist uh, assertion in all India's faith communities and particularly in India's majority Hindu faith community. Third. Ah, yes, sentence take bar sunna hai. Especially, especially in the Hindu majority community. Sabke, sabke fundamentalists hai, but the Hindus are just too much. Communities, and particularly, it's fundament, fundamentalist uh, assertion in all India's faith communities, and particularly in India's majority Hindu faith community. Look at this fucking liar. Particularly in the Hindu faith community. Third, the decline of the political center, particularly the conversion of political parties into family firms. Fourth, the corruption and corrosion of public institutions. Fifth, the growing gap between the rich and the poor. Sixth, the rapid pace of environmental degradation. Seventh, the apathy of the media. Eighth, uh, the political fragmentation and the policy incoherence it gives birth to. Ninth, the uh, disturbances in the Northeast and the Northwest, in Kashmir, Manipur, and Nagaland. And finally, a very unstable neighborhood. Now, there are 10 reasons uh, India, I believe, will not be a superpower. But to- oh, acha. Ye, ye, ye das karan ke wajay se, India superpower nahi ban paega. Ye to ek prediction hai, joki almost abhi bhi, abhi already dhwast ho chuka hai. Now, I think we will learn why India should not become, must not become a superpower. Okay, now the fun begins. This uh, analytical... Uh, a listing of problems that the country faces, I'd like to add a citizen's uh, desire that India should not even aspire to be a superpower. In my view, uh, <coughs> international relations is not a hundred meter race, you know, where someone must come first and someone must come last. Uh, in my view, uh, if you look at what the 20th century or indeed the last 200 years have taught you, is that uh, there are no permanent winners and losers in history. Uh, you know, the British had to cope with decline, the Soviet Union coped very badly with decline. We really don't know how the Americans will cope with decline. And maybe we, should, we Indians should never be in that position in the first place. By arguing thus, I'm not promoting either an isolationism or some kind of Gandhian pacifism. I believe that India has to be vigilant in protecting its borders. It has to have a capable and efficient and well-funded army. It has, had, has to have a much better security and intelligence gathering system than it has at present to tackle particular threats of right-wing and left-wing extremism and terrorism. So I'm not... Are, bapre. 
राइट विंग और लेफ्ट विंग एक्सट्रीविज्म के लिए आर्मी चाहिए नेबर्स के लिए नहीं चाहिए बट बट इवन अदर देन दैट ऑल द प्रॉब्लम्स ही मेंशन फॉर द 40 मिनट्स ऑफ हिज फर्स्ट फॉर फर्स्ट 45 मिनट्स ऑफ हिज स्पीच दे आर स्पेसिफिकली बिकॉज़ वी आर नॉट अ सुपर पावर व्हाट काइंड ऑफ एन इंटेलेक्चुअल और हिस्टोरियन इज दिस इफ वी वर अ सुपर पावर दीस प्रॉब्लम्स वुड नॉट बी देयर टिम लेट इट हैज अ प्रेजेंट टू टैकल पर्टिकुलर थ्रेट्स ऑफ राइट विंग एंड लेफ्ट विंग एक्सट्रीमिज्म एंड टेररिज्म सो आई एम नॉट अ गांधी एंड पैसिफिस्ट नोर एम आई एन आइसोलेशनिस्ट आई थिंक there are things in the kutish tower uh which are different from what uh, some uh, of my fellow compatriots think india should be teaching the world i mean uh, i think the desire for superstar uh, for super pardon comes from a kind of male anxiety uh it's expressed uh, most visibly in my country by three kinds of men uh businessmen male editors of newspapers <laughs> and male politicians in new delhi who uh, would like to be treated uh, you know the male editors would be like to be treated the way the editor of the new york times is or maybe 10 years later the uh, editor of the people's daily of beijing will be uh, 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 the businessman and so on now i think uh, it comes from a kind of uh, status anxiety i think what india uh, and they would like to strut around uh, you know the world economic forum in davos uh, you know other corridors of global power and influence making in the way in which americans have become accustomed to in which the chinese apparently are now becoming accustomed to and the ways in which the british and the russians and the french used to start around uh, in the past now i think what india can teach the world i mean i think uh, really i'm saying two or three things the first thing i'm saying is india super power nahi hona chahiye magar india super power nahi hona chahiye ye bolne ke liye super power desh mein hi kyu jana padta hai bhosri ke ki ye kyu ye bangladesh ke gaon mein ja ke bolo bangal ke gaon mein ja ke yahan talk do kyu nahi de rahe ho that we have Yeah, Nina is saying wanting to be a superpower is patriarchy now. क्या क्या बोला ये? ये male anxiety है, male fantasy है being a superpower. अगर है तो अच्छा है, तब तब चलो हम credit ले लेते हैं. Serious fault lines and divisions within Indian society. So he is basically invisibilizing all the women who also want these things. Can you see that? This is the problem with leftists. This is the same when they talk about Muslims that Muslims are victims, Muslims are oppressed, but they don't. But they ignore people, Muslims who are successful, people who Muslims who have never faced uh, any any bad behavior from Hindus, uh, Muslims today who are who are proud to be uh, Indians, etc. Same case with with blacks in America. Black conservatives को ये invisibilize करते हैं कि अच्छा black का ये problem है, black का वो problem है. Black conservative बोल रहे हैं अरे नहीं तुम सब गलत बोल रहे हो. कहाँ problem है? in the same way now he is playing to the feminist crowd in canada obviously he knows there are all feminists in front of him and and he is saying it's a male fantasy it's a male anxiety that's leading businessmen and uh, media men and po- main, male politicians to have these superpower fantasies and women don't have these these, these stupid crazy fantasies because women are so much better but the women who want these things then are obviously stupid serb servant uh, women who who just uh, listen to their husbands and all that's that's his idea of women जहन दोस्तों इस सेंग फोर्थ टाइप ऑफ मेन आर कॉलोनाइज कास्ट लाइक गोवा और उसका तो यही सेंग गोवा थिंग्स आर मदरलैंड विल नेवर बी अ सुपर पावर बिकॉज़ ऑफ मेल एंजाइटी यस एंड वी रियली नीड टू रीफोकस आवर अटेंशन ऑन दिस सेकंड थिंग आई एम सेइंग इज दैट व्हाट इज यूनिक अबाउट इंडिया इज इट्स पॉलिटिकल एक्सपेरिमेंट द फैक्ट दैट वी आर सो लार्ज एंड सो डाइवर्स येट अ सिंगल नेशन द फैक्ट दैट अगेंस्ट द ऑड्स अरे हर्ष जा थोड़ा रुक जाओ और थोड़ा देर बाकी है 1.25 में अभी खत्म हो जाएगा डिस्पाइट पॉवर्टी एंड इलिटरेसी वी समहाउ कंस्ट्रक्टेड एन इलेक्टोरल सिस्टम बेस्ड ऑन इंडिविजुअल्स चूजिंग द राइट टू इलेक्ट देयर ओन लीडर्स आई थिंक व्हेन यूरोप व्हिच इज फाइंडिंग ग्रेट डिफिकल्टी इन डीलिंग विद इट्स मुस्लिम माइनॉरिटी दे कैन पॉसिबली टर्न टू हाउ इंडिया हैज डेल्ट नॉट टू बैडली विद इट्स मुस्लिम माइनॉरिटी व्हेन द अमेरिकंस आर पैरानॉइड अबाउट द ग्रोइंग स्पैनिश स्पीकर्स इन देयर होमलैंड फॉर एग्जांपल वी शुड सी कंसीडर हाउ इंडिया Uh, has uh, you know um, uh, has dealt wonderfully with uh, multilingualism i mean and in india is not a hindu country india india as 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 a fault line tha bahut bahut we have not done a great job of handling our uh, minorities but now he's saying we have done a great job of handling our minorities forget forget america in 1956 and i'll end with this example in 1956 the <coughs> parliament of ceylon as sri lanka was then known passed the sinhala only language policy it said from now on on the european model where a single nation must have a single language to bind the citizens in one kind of unified national purpose sinhala will be the only language of government administration and university education and the tamils of the north protested they said you know this policy will uh, you know we have an ancient and beautiful language and we be discriminated against and at that stage in 1956 the same year uh, india reorganized the map of india on linguistic grounds 
So we, you know, we did what uh, Canada did, except that you had two languages. We have, you know, 16 or 18. And it happened in the same year. And in, uh, that Sri Lanka imposed one language as the official national language. And India allowed a diversity of languages to flourish. And there was a... And and he is now defending the idea that Indian states were, were divided on, on linguistic lines. Fuck. He does not want Hindu fundamentalism to take root, but he has no problem with linguistic fundamentalism to take root. Of, of linguistic fundamentalism taking root. Linguistic line space state divide kar doge to kya hoga? Sinhala MP, uh, called Colvin de, Souza, uh, uh, Colvin de Silva, who said in the parliament, he, he, he told the government, which is promoting a Sinhala only policy, he said, I warn you, <coughs> one language, two nations. Two languages, one nation. Now in India, uh, we had Hindi zealots. You know, there was a the slogan of the old right wing party, the Jansang, Hindi, Hindu, Hindustan. He who is a hin Hindu, he who speaks Hindi, only he is a proper Indian. We would have had one language, 17 nations. Okay. We have read that paper by Venkat Dhulipala, okay? Muslim leaders of Congress who are opposed to Muslim League, League, they are on record saying that we are propagating Hindi specifically as part of Congress to show Hindu-Muslim friendship. When Doordarshan started uh, doing the programs, they said that, see, this is one language, Hindi, all other languages are regional. Other languages. Otherization literally hua tha. Congress ke haath ho. Hindi ko promote karne ke chakkar mein. Aur us chakkar mein shudh Hindi bhi ghatiya ho gaya. Aur, aur Urdu, Urdu field Hindi ho gaya. Jis mein abhi hum sirf kha, kha, ka uchan kaise kare wo decide karte hai. To jo chiz pura ka pura shuru se Congress ne kiya tha. Uska, uska dosh ab jansang ko diya ja raha hai. Adi, we are extraordinary political experiment. Uh, it's an experiment that uh, hasn't completely succeeded. It's still finding its way. Uh, there are divisions and fissures within. But I think what we, uh, if at all, uh, uh, we have a lesson to the world. Uh, it's not about domination. It's about coexistence. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Why India should not become a superpower? Ram, uh, thank you very much. That was wonderful. Now, we have some time for questions, if you're willing. See people standing up. That may work better for you. So you choose. Uh, thank you. My name is uh, Safwat Ayub from... A very low IQ, low intellect uh, speech. Hai bhai. Kaha ten reason diya why India should not become a superpower? The South North uh, Forum. Uh, Mr. Goha, you gave us, uh, uh, I must say, a very rich uh, presentation of... Uh, Aspects we, we were uh, not aware of. Ah, ah, ah. Ek Muslim bhaijan ko laga hai ke Ramchandra Guha ne bada, bada badiya baate bole hai. Uh, why? Because uh, we see, like your press, the glamorous side of it. I mean, few years ago, and Ambassador Malone uh, was in India, I think, at that time, Minister Kanwal of uh, Science and, Research, uh, and Technology was here in Canada. And I can tell you that he, his agenda was full. Everybody wanted to see him. Everybody wanted to sign agreements with, uh, with uh, advanced India. I was a kid in Egypt when Jawaharlal Nehru and Nasser formed together the non-alignment movement. And the Egyptians were looking always towards India. How come India has succeeded in producing a car 100%? How India could do all this? Uh, the disadvantages you mentioned, having uh, some prime ministers wanting their, their children to be that uh, uh, succeed them. Well, we have in the, in the southern borders some examples of this sometimes. And uh, we've seen it in many other places. I don't know if this has uh, been a handicap for India. Uh, what I wanted to say is that in Canada, for instance, I have a brother who went recently to recruit 500 engineers in your country to work for a Canadian firm. It's five times cheaper and much better in quality. So this is how we see India here. Thank no, I think it's, you know, uh, 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 I said, I, what I was trying to provide was a reality check. You know, the aspects of India's economic growth that are important. The engineers you talk about are what I call the benign side of globalization. Uh, the disposition that's not the benign side of globalization. That's the benign side of capitalism. The of tribal people to greedily extract mineral uh, resources is not a happy thing. That would not happen if, if we were a superpower. And I think India is large and diverse and complicated and uh, uh, different parts are you know uh, moving at a different momentum. It's complicated because you just defended dividing the country into st in, on, on linguistic lines. And uh, 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 what I was really, you know, I, I'm a patriot. I mean, I, I would ah, like my country. हाँ अब अब बोलना पड़ रहा है भाई हम तो पेट्रियट है जेसाई दीपक को कभी जेसाई दीपक को कभी बोलना पड़ता है जी टू डू वेल टू बी जस्ट टू लिफ्ट हिस पीपल आउट ऑफ पावर्टी 
I am mean, also a Democrat. I abhor uh, Maoist revolutionaries, as I abhor right-wing Hindu extremists. But I'm not, um, uh, you know, I'm not one-eyed. I'm not blind, and I'm not a jingoist uh, trumpeter. You know, I mean, minister, and I'm not a minister. You know, I'm an independent intellectual. Well, so, yeah, be so, so, so I have to say what I see, and I see uh, these con conflicts and contradictions around me. And you are a fucking bl blind person, uh, which uh, are also as much the Indian story as the 500 engineers. Thank you. Yeah. My name is Anu Bose, and apparent, apparent economic rise. Okay, a lot of comments have come. I need to check this out. Uh, what was this guy famous for again? <laughs> yeah, he's famous for writing history books. Uh, that I left is my IQ. Uh, Dhunna is like Sahara me Samudra Dhunna. <laughs> uh, Anup Chakravarti is saying, "Ek reason hi diya." Basically, ki superpowers hone hi nahi chahiye. Yes. Uh, Anushka is saying, "What a what a terrible way to end a speech." Study room is saying, "Ratin baje." Yes. Uh, Guha said that white people should not worry about growing Muslim population because India has Muslim population, but he didn't tell the Muslim who were behind the partition of India and massacres happened. Trudeau is also a dynast. His father was PM of Canada before. Yes. Uh, and same with Bush, Bush family, Kennedy. Yes. तो ट्रूडो का बाप कैस्ट्रो है ना ही वाज जस्ट पेडलिंग द यूजुअल मिथ ऑफ हार्मोनियस एक्जिस्टेंस यस मैसेकर्स वर डन बाय मुस्लिम्स ऑल द इलीगल थिंग्स डन इन इंडिया डोमिनेट बाय मुस्लिम्स एंड सच अ हिपोक्रेट यस एंड एंड जहां पे हिंदू मेजॉरिटी खत्म होता होता है वहीं से इंसर्जेंसी शुरू होता है मैजिकली माय रूट्स आर इन कलकत्ता व्हिच आई वोंट से कोलकाता आई विल से कलकत्ता आई वोंट से कोलकाता आई विल से कलकत्ता बिकॉज़ ब्रिटिश ने नाम दिया था तब तो ठीक ही होगा आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन फॉर यू There is another fissure which I wish you had addressed, which is the question of the Dalits of India. I think as long as we have the question of untouchability in practice, if not in law, then it's going to hold India back very, very much. He, kya bol raha hai? 2010 me untouchability. Untouchability in practice, if not in law, then it's going to hold India back very, very much. Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, look, I mean, I listed 10. There could be 20 or 25 issues. I had to be picky. But I think uh, the tribal people are much worse off than Dalits. I would put it this way: that uh, uh, the Dalits, for example, have political representation. I mean, it, it, uh, a Dalit woman is the chief minister of India's largest state. Dalits are visible, uh, uh, very visible in the intellectual community, uh, in the government, not yet in entrepreneurship. Uh, but uh, the untouchables, uh, you know, I could add a gender to my list, for example. But I think. Untouchables, bol raha hai. Khud bol bol raha untouchables. Uh, those are issues which, over a period of time. Yes, Anushka Tyagi. He, he Anushka Tyagi is saying he keeps putting Nazi-led revolutionaries and religious extremists in the same basket. That's the addiction to false equivalency. Ha, yeah, yaha bhi dosh hai, yaha bhi dosh hai. Equate karna hai. Agar ek side ko uh, specifically ek side ko agar dosh do, tab to unka intellectual uh, ban bante phir na hi band ho jayega. India will uh, will resolve. I think the Dalits in 60 years, uh, we have made some progress. Compared to the past six thousand years of oppression of Dalits, so I would not put it. I mean, I, I'm cognizant of it and I'm aware of it, but I don't think it's as serious and fundamental a challenge. I think the procedures and processes of Indian democracy can take account of it, uh, but they can't really take account of the tribal question or the question of the borderlands, the Nagas, the Manipuris, in the same. Thank you. My name is Veena Ravichandran. I work with IDRC's Innovation, Technology, and Society program, and I work predominantly in the South Asian region. And first of all, what a brilliant tapestry of uh, the Indian scenario! And uh, this is a brilliant, brilliant tapestry of Indian scenario. And I'm, I'm delighted the way you brought out the, the fault lines and the fissures underneath. I have very brief two questions about the religious right wing fundamentalism. You alluded to uh, within a particular region. You said that there are rifts within a community, a religious community, of extreme right wing and then moderate. And I wonder where that's coming from. Is it is it coming from? Uh, the rich poor gap, or is it education? What is the what is the uh, you know trigger for that kind of a split within a religion? Ah, अच्छा आप question किया है. देखते हैं क्या उत्तर होगा. एक तो खुद ने option दे दिया. अच्छा वो गरीब है. इसलिए शायद मदर चुद है. अब देखते हैं राम राम रामचंद्र गुहा का क्या उत्तर है. Question. I'll finish my second. Uh, do you see at all a visible um, coming forward of social entrepreneurship? Today we have at least five leading uh, business schools, the IITs, which are offering courses in social entrepreneurship, and there are, that means there is an appetite. There are young people, and so much um, you know visible uprising of young people, youngsters or educated who consciously stay back and they want to do. Um, and this is seen in the number of non-government organizations purely. Ha, wa stay back. Why is it happening? Because eight percent GDP growth rate was in 2010. Me bhi, jo inko apparent lag raha tha, jo ki nahi hona chahiye, because income inequality bar raha hai. तो चूथिए उसके वजह से ही लोग नहीं जा रहे हैं उतना इंडिया से बाहर आज के दिन में फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन 
I think uh, you have a you have a domestic situation uh, or a, a regional situation where you have the rise of Islamic fundamentalism in the region, you know, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, which is a provocation of Hindu fundamentalism. But there's also a global situation. I mean, uh, there's the conflict in the Middle East, you know, which is uh, aggressive Zionism versus you know equally aggressive uh, Islamism. I mean, you have the kind of evangelical fervor of a George Bush. So you have a kind of a global situation that that feeds it. The other question, I think, uh, other issue was social entrepreneurship. If I was to look at uh, India, if I was to compare. Wow, he actually gave a they gave gave a right answer. Interesting. Chalo, pura pura ye live stream me ek ek cheez iska iska correct answer. It was worth it so far. Okay, Maximus is saying brief question. Huh? See how his response had no real answer to anything. Just words <laughs> trying to show his high opinion and educatedness. Yes. India in 1950 with India in 2010. I would uh, conceptually uh, do, uh, compare it like this. I would say for a democracy uh, and a welfare state to function at somewhere near optimum capacity. You need three sectors to pull your weight. You need the state, you need the private entrepreneurs, and you need civil society. In the 50s and 60s, we had an efficient, capable, focused state. We had no NGO movement, and we had timid and insecure entrepreneurs. Today, uh, we have a timid or insecure entrepreneurs. Why were they? What mystery is behind it? They were such timid. They were such such insecure. They were Tata timid or insecure. They were Bajaj timid or insecure. They were and the rest of Tata and Bajaj were not able to make it. Having civil society movement, uh, we have social entrepreneurs, but we also have, uh, on the other hand, some industrialists who are just incredibly greedy and you know uncaring about uh, society as a whole. Uncaring, both of them are not giving any money. So, what will they do? Why will they care? Why will they do? But we have really a malfunctioning state. So, I mean, you need all three sectors. I mean, whether it be Sweden or Canada or anywhere else, you need civil. हाँ चुतिया देखो बार बार सुपर पावर का एग्जांपल देता है फिर बोलता है कि हमको सुपर पावर नहीं बनना है हमको इनकम इन क्वालिटी नहीं बढ़वाना है तो कनाडा और स्वीडन में क्यों नहीं है ये सब प्रॉब्लम स्वीडन गरीब देश है इक्वली पुअर है सब सोसाइटी स्टेट एंड प्राइवेट सेक्टर आई मीन यू नीड द एंटरप्रेन्योरल एनर्जी ऑफ द प्राइवेट सेक्टर यू नीड द मोबिलाइजिंग पावर एंड द कलेक्टिव सॉलिडारिटी ऑफ सिविल सोसाइटी ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस एंड यू नीड इंपार्श इंपार्शियल कैपेबली फंक्शनिंग फेस स्टेट एंड आई थिंक अ पब्लिक इंस्टीट्यूशंस आर इन अ स्टेट ऑफ क्राइसिस एंड दैट्स व्हाट वी रियली नीड टू एड्रेस हाँ कलेक्टिव सिविल सोसाइटी तो हाँ था संजीव सन्याल इसको बिग बिंदी क्लास रेड बिंदी क्लास बोलते हैं ये सारे लोग जो सोशल वर्कर्स होते हैं और और कास्ट लाइंस पे और डिवाइड करते जाते हैं और डिवाइड करते जाते हैं इन जिन जिनका डिस्कोर्स जिनका स्टैटिस्टिक्स और डेटा उठा के यूपी और बिहार में कास्ट कास्टिज्म बेस्ड पॉलिटिक्स का राज होता है वो सब तो इन लोगों की वजह से ही होता है जो तुमको चाहिए The Indian political experiment is is、uh, quite right, I think, especially with the different fault lines that that exist there. And the last part of your talk about、uh, the lessons that that other countries can learn from India is something that I think about a lot because it seems like a lot of the problems that other countries have, there is some sort of analog that exists in India, whether it's language or, or insurgency or separatist movements or whatever. But then again,、um, and this this question is very general, just to provoke some thought. I wonder, I'm wondering, however, if India is just too extraordinary to actually provide true lessons to other countries. So it doesn't seem like other countries can really do what India has done. Well, to a limited extent, I think、uh, you know there's an example I like to give, and、uh, David has heard this before, so he'll crave my indulgence. And it's due with example、uh, the handling of、uh, ethnic diversity.、Uh, you know,、uh, four years ago when the French were beating the head about the headscarf,、uh, I gave a talk in a university in Kerala, in a Muslim majority district in Kerala. I mean, you see, it's it's the district of Malappuram, previously known as Kadikat, which is the、uh, one of the few Muslim majority districts in India outside Kashmir Valley. And it was a talk to an audience like this in a university, and at least forty percent of the audience were young girls in headscarves, and the headscarf was liberating. It allowed them to come to university and acquire a university education. Now there's a clear difference between a headscarf and a veil and a full veil. Now the Indians live with accommodation. I mean, we don't mind. I mean, a Sikh wears a turban, a Hindu peasant wears a turban. Indians live with accommodation. Hindus don't live with accommodation. Hindu fundamentalism, Hindu extremism, thirty times, forty times, said. Now you're saying that Indians live with acceptance, bro. A, a Hindu woman. Covers her head with a you know a scarf. I mean the French would be saying, "What the hell are you doing?" I mean my wife when sometimes she covers. I mean they, they might be. So I think there are some things like this or linguistic diversity. Ha, ye bhi galat bol raha hai. Wo ghunghat ko bol raha hai ki French French ko ye bhi lagta. French are so evil that they hate Muslims for for head scarves. They would also reject Hindu head scarves. But no, people in church also wear veils. French ko usse problem hai kya? I think、uh, is another lesson、uh, that the Sri Lankans could have learned from us. They still could. I mean you know talk about Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan crisis has two elements. First,、uh, the imposition of Sinhala on the Tamils. Second, the fact that in 1972 Buddhism was made the official state religion. 
और हिस्टोरिकल जो इंजस्टिस दलित के साथ हुआ था जीजिया टैक्स कौन पे कर रहा था फॉर्चुनेटली आई मीन एल टी टी दैमल टाइगर्स वर अ ब्रूटल फैसिस्ट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड आई ग्लैड डेफिनेश बट एट द सेम टाइम द काइंड ऑफ ट्राइम्फलिज्मली टूडे is not going to restore peace and trust in in the northern parts of sri lanka that will only come uh, by a gesture such as uh, such as giving tamil equal rights or saying there is no equation of faith with state sri lanka is not a buddhist nation it is for everyone so i think there are things about the indian experiment i mean our scale is staggering i agree i mean our scale is staggering and uh, uh, i often say that <coughs> uh, it's probably um, you know the soviet union and uh, the usa which have you know which are national experiments comparable in scale so that sense yes but i think there's certain limited lessons uh, but at the same time we could learn lessons from other countries you know i think that the reciprocity is important I mean, we could learn uh, how to deconvert political parties into open secular institutions you know uh, to limit the influence of kin and nepotism on uh, 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 you know in the way in which other institutions function so i think um, uh, uh, but we should not learn free market economics from other countries and prosperity from other countries or how to handle environment better from other countries uh, i think the boring can be both ways Thanks, Ram. I think we'll take. Uh, mindful of your voice, amongst <laughs> other factors, we'll just take the two people who are still standing, and then we'll draw it to close. You all know there's some coffee and tea outside, some cookies. So I hope we can all get together over those. I'm sure Ram will stay for a few minutes to speak to people. Thank you. My name is Christina Marcotte. I actually work in aerospace and industry Canada, and here at a personal interest, having been a student of India in my undergraduate degree. Um, you're speaking. I've heard India referred to as more of a status quo power rather than a superpower. I was wondering, though, in your opinion, if India may end up a superpower in spite of itself with the continued economic growth. I know the Indian Army is now looking at acquiring some new capabilities. That, given the right circumstances, India may decide to intervene in something because they feel they have to, which is what I mean by sort of maybe they don't consciously decide to be a superpower, but may end up in that role anyway. Well, it's hard to say. I mean, you can't say what the circumstances would be. Uh, in 1987, we intervened in Sri Lanka and got a bloody nose. I mean, Indian Army. I think it was a mistake. Uh, status quo power would be about it 71 ignore kar diya i, I the, the phrase i prefer to either status quo power or super power is not of my coinage uh, uh, it's of the coinage of my colleague sunil khilani and he calls india a bridging power you know india is because of its history its culture its diversity it's uniquely placed to bridge uh, the west and the east asia and europe uh, democracy and totalitarianism if you wish you know i think that's that's how i would uh, like to see not status quo is too negative super power is too uh, triumphalist you know if you, if you know what i mean i think bridging power is kind of where where i would see yeah. yeah. and my name is purvi i'm an intern here at idrc um you mentioned the crisis of governance and, and the decline of public institutions in india one phenomenon that i see is stemming from that is the extreme activism of indian courts there seems to be other institutions in india that are completely failing not being able to provide goods and services and the courts have taken on this role for themselves where they because they are not supposed to provide goods and services the goods and services are supposed to provide by the greedy capitalists जो जो कि प्रोवाइड सेल करने के बाद उनका और कोई रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी नहीं रहता है स्टेपिंग इन टू फिल दैट वैक्यूम मोस्टली द एग्जीक्यूटिव समटाइम्स द लेजिस्लेटर्स वेल um it could be a good thing in that the job gets done somebody is doing it it could be a bad thing in that it raises lots of questions of legitimacy it's not a democratic institution especially in india the judiciary is not a democratic institution at all um i just want to get your thoughts on yeah. whether that should be looked at as a good thing or a bad thing i think uh, uh, you're right uh, 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 i mean let me put it this way that the period of activism or hyper activism of the indian courts has passed its peak it was 10 or 15 years ago and now i think the courts are less willing yeah uh, yeah and now we are back there on balance i like you i have ambivalent feelings about activism uh, because it's going into areas where sometimes they don't have the competence and i think one of the problems of the indian court I mean, so far fortunately uh, the indian the higher levels of the indian judiciary are are relatively free from corruption there are a few corrupt judges but the proportion of corrupt judges नेपोटिज्म 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 एक घंटे से नेपोटिज्म बोल रहा था जुडिशियरी में नेपोटिज्म नहीं है इज मच स्मॉलर देन द प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ करप्ट पॉलिटिशियंस और इंडीड करप्ट सिविल सर्वेंट्स और पॉसिबली इवन करप्ट न्यूज़पेपर एडिटर्स यू नो आई कुड इवन से दैट यू नो यू नो इफ यू इफ यू हैव अ लार्ज लार्ज यू नो अ डेफिनेशन ऑफ करप्शन व्हिच इज ब्रॉड सो आई थिंक दैट्स अ गुड पार्ट ऑफ द बट वेयर वेयर वी एंड डेविड नोज दिस सब्जेक्ट प्रोबब्ली बेटर देन मी आई थिंक व्हाट वी डोंट हैव इज अ सफिशिएंटली एजुकेटेड जुडिशियरी यू नो वी लिव इन अ वेरी कॉम्प्लेक्स वर्ल्ड क्यों है क्योंकि हमारा नेपोटिस्टिक जुडिशियरी है सो दैट हाउ टू डील विद जेनेटिक मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ क्रॉप्स हाउ टू डील विद न्यू काइंड्स ऑफ सर्वेलेंस सिस्टम्स दैट टेक्नोलॉजी ऑफ दिस यू नो द इंडियन जुडिशियरी इज बोर्न ऑमनिसेंट यू नो यू 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 जॉइन द जुडिशियरी एट 40 एंड हु नोस आई मीन दे थिंक दे नो एवरीथिंग सो दे दे यू नो व्हाट दे नीड इज रेगुलर रिफ्रेशर कोर्सेस यू नो द जजेस बट द जजेस डोंट थिंक 
the lordships don't think that they can actually go and be educated so ha njc to nahi accept kiya tha tum logon ne support kiya tha and also uh, because there's now increasing political interference in the recruitment of judges the quality of the indian judiciary uh, i think is also declining i mean we had outstanding judges and uh, more than the activism i would be worried about uh, the quality and the, and the, the sheer intellectual power of the indian judiciary which i think is now uh, not what it used to be Ram, thank you. On that point, okay. I once saw a wonderful sight uh, in Bhutan. Ah. Uh.